have your hair turned. <laughs> Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover of the Auto Trailer Marla 720. So as I start, we'll walk around on the driver's side of the vehicle first. First point you get to is your hookah point. So you'd lift the flap up, get your hookah blade, expose the ends, and then slide on to there. Always hook the vehicle up first, then the power source and do it in reverse when unhooking the vehicle as we wouldn't want you walking around with the live lead. Below you've got your grey waste outlet, so this is anything that you've put down any plug holes, so shower, tray, hand basin, kitchen sink, all goes into a holding tank. And then you'd simply use the lever on the side to open but you'd open it when you're above the grid on the way out of the site, which is normally called the motorhome service bay, the grey water disposal point. And this would be one point you'd want to drain off in the winter, as you wouldn't want the water to freeze in this tanks, as it's plastic and could crack the tank. Next up, we'll have your LPG, so liquid petroleum gas. You can fit two bottles in here. It runs off propane and you can get two six kilograms in here so what you do is you put your bottle into place once you've got it in situ use the straps to tie the bottle in so always tie the bottle in to connect the pigtail to the bottle it's a left hand thread so opposite threads with it being gas and then you would use a spanner to nip this up so you can use a gas spanner or adjustable wrench nip the pigtail on the bottle and then turn the bottle on and off from the top obviously turn it off when you travel as it's far safer to have the gas isolated when traveling and then when you do turn the bottle off on there's a little black button at the bottom there which is on a crash valve you need to press that in for three seconds and allow it into the vehicle you also want to make sure that this crash valve this yellow toggle is pushed in on the regulator otherwise the gas won't come through into the vehicle but turn it off when you're about to travel because you don't want to be running with gas on board and you can fit a spare bottle in there as well coming to the next locker you've got your cassette so all your lockers open with the black key here the little keys for your water and the main keys for your vehicle so open it up here, make sure the blade's closed and you'll be able to lift and slide it out. You then want to take the grey cap off to expose it like this. The grey cap just acts as a measuring stick so it's 120ml of liquid that can fit in the grey cap. But I'll get onto that in a moment. So you take the grey cap off, you take your cassette to your waste disposal point which is normally behind or beside your shower and toilet block. If it was too heavy, you have got a handle there so you can drag it around the site as it's got wheels. And then what you do is you'd tip it out and empty. So this is just water we've tested the cassette with. Once you've emptied it, if you've, there's normally a hose pipe. If you put some water down the spout, put the cap back on, give it a rinse and tip out again. Then if you're using the liquid form of chemical, either the green or the blue that's when you'd use your 120 mil on your grey cap as a measuring stick tip it into here put the cap on and then push it back near the vehicle and it's good to use or if you're using the tablet form put the cassette in completely dry once you've cleaned it and then open the blade on the inside of the toilet pump about a pint of water down into the cassette and then follow it by a tablet either the blue or the green they're in a the cellophane but please ask your site which chemical they prefer to use because some sites now want you to use the green rather than the blue as it's more environmentally friendly behind the back wheel you've got your fresh water dump so it's your outlet for your fresh water so if you want to Get rid of your fresh water as you're not using the van for a couple of weeks you don't want it to go stagnant you've taken on contaminated water or you're doing the winterization process which is where you want to drain all the water out of the vehicle as you don't want it to freeze when you've got the vehicle parked up in the winter not in use i'd simply open here and it would just all flow out from this pipe here in the locker here so turning the key 
allows you to push the two catches in. And then in here you do have storage. So there's your water pump. So when your pump's turned on from the control panel and you open the tap, this will kick in. And then here is your 10 litre boiler. So your boiler holds 10 litres of water in the water container. When not in use and especially in the winter, you don't want that 10 litres to freeze in here because it's not covered under warranty as it's your responsibility to drain the vehicle off. So to do so, this yellow toggle is lying down. That needs to stand up on end and that will allow the valve to allow the 10 litres of water out of the boiler. So if we just lift that up like so, you'll see 10 litres of water underneath the van come out. You'll see there, that's 10 litres of water. You want to leave that stood up during the time you've got the vehicle in storage. Then you'd open the grey and the blue fresh water tap and wastewater tap. You then open all the taps throughout the vehicle, leave the mixer taps open and remove your shower head from your shower hose, which stops any um, water in the pipes from getting stuck in there and any air building up. And then when you come to reuse the vehicle, You'd shut this, you'd shut your blue tap, which is your fresh water tap, you'd shut your grey tap, which is your waste. Shut all the taps through in the vehicle, throughout the vehicle. You then fill the vehicle with water via a hose pipe, which I'll show you how to do so on the other side of the vehicle. And then what you would do is you would go in, put the control panel on, put the pump on, go to the cold side of the tap first. You'll get automa automatic cold water come through as it's drawn from the main freshwater tank underneath through the pump into your tap. You would then go to your fresh, your hot water side and then it'll cough, splutter, make all sorts of noises and what that is doing is it's drawing the fresh water from the tank up into the boiler, filling this with 10 litres, pushing all the air out through the taps until that boiler gets to 10 litres of water capacity and then it'll start coming through your taps. You've got your vent here for your boiler, so this just allows the fumes out when it's on gas. And then at the back of the vehicle, you've got your high level brake light, your reverse camera. This customer on this vehicle has opted a bike rack, so the 720 doesn't come as standard with a bike rack. This is an option, but all the controls that I'm showing you are the same regardless. So you would put your Wheels. wheels on here, these through the spokes to tie the wheels down onto the rails and then these just go through your crossbar so you've got your first bike, your second bike, your third bike and your fourth bike. Then what I would advise is you put some sort of bike lock round there just in case you do have to make a stop with a van in the services you don't want your bikes to be taken off the back when the vehicle is unattended. Got some more storage on this side as you can see there's your carpets in there and then you get to your fresh water filler so like I said that little key locks this flap so what you do is you just put your fresh water hose in there and wait until it overflows or until you're happy you've got enough water on board so do carry a hose pipe you can either use the collapsible ones, which store down into a little bag, or you can use the normal hose pipe as long as it hasn't been used in the garden. It's totally fine. It doesn't have to be food graded unless you want it to be. And then you'd need some hose ends. So you'd need a screw on end for the tap and a hose lock to connect to the tap on site, as it's mainly just a brass tap with no fitting. And then next week you do have your external gas point. So you've got a spigot there, so you just need to cut that off put some orange gas hose pipe with some jubilee clips to connect to there that connects into there then connects to your kadak or your external orange heater or barbecue and you can turn it on and off from here and it'll work off the bottle that's on board the vehicle instead of carrying a spare fridge vents awning light this customer's offered an awning they don't come standard with awnings so they don't come standard with awnings, this is an option. And then at the door of the passenger side, you've got your diesel filler, which opens with the main ignition key. And then underneath you've got your add blue. So this is a 19 litre tank. And when it needs add blue, it'll come on between the temperature gauge and the fuel gauge. And you can simply pull into a service station and buy off the pump. 
as most wagons and buses and new cars need hand blue now or you can buy it in the drums and top it up but please top it up as soon as the light comes on because it's telling you you've got limited mileage so you've got about 500 to a thousand miles left in the ad blue tank before the engine will simply won't start but don't think you've got a thousand miles because your vehicle will go into limp mode should it get too low on the ad blue which is 50 mile an hour max speed to protect the engine so just top it up as soon as it comes on and the cab you've got the tyre pressures on the passenger door panel, so 5.5 bar, which is 79.5 psi. That's on front and back. Engine battery lives underneath this compartment here, and you've got a tool kit that lives underneath the floor, so it's got a jack and a brace and a torn eye in there. And then your bonnet release is just on the side of the passenger dashboard. So underneath the, the bonnet, you've got your fluids to the left-hand side. So you've got your screen wash. This lifts off and you've got your power steering fluid and your radiator coolant. Brake fluid reservoir. Oil filler and oil dipsticks for checking your levels. Paint code for the golden white, which is 506, which is a fade color. Earth for giving or receiving a jump start and positive just behind the passenger headlight. So there is a cover that goes over there so you may have to lift that up with a screwdriver or a key. And then you can put your positive terminal onto there. And then you've got your weight plate here. So it's three and a half ton gross vehicle weight. Your train weight is 4,750. So this is whatever you're towing and the vehicle can't exceed 4,750. So when you step near the vehicle, above the habitation door, you've got your main 12 volt control panel. So if you hooked up, it'll say leisure battery charging, and that means that you are receiving two 40 volts. So you can use all three pin sockets throughout the vehicle. Otherwise you will just be off your leisure battery, so you'll only have 12 volt. And your master switch is in the top left hand corner, so that turns the 12 volt on or the 240, should you be hooked up. Below, you've got your master switch for your lights, and then they all are individually switched. And below that, you've got your water pump. So you must have the water pump on to use the taps, toilet, shower. Otherwise, you will just get whatever's left in the pipework, and it'll simply fade out. So putting this on will pressurize the water, but only put it on if you've got enough water in the tank. Otherwise, you could damage the pump. On this side, you've got your own light, which is the light outside the vehicle. And then if you press here, it'll go through the various settings on the screen in the middle. So it'll tell you internal humidity and degrees. You can set the time. It'll tell you how many volts are in your leisure battery, how many volts are in your vehicle battery, how much water is in your fresh which is 50% and your waste, which is zero. So you can scroll through there and see all the different levels that the vehicle has. Going to this side, this is your Truma digital control panel for your heating and hot water system. So you press and hold to turn on and off. And then this is standby. So to get into the menu, you just press once. So in the top left hand corner, you've got a motorhome with a thermometer in. This is how hot you want the internal side of the motorhome to be. So the interior, so you can have it all the way to off if it was the summer and you didn't want the heating on at all. Or you can have it all the way up to 30 degrees being the highest setting it has. So once you're happy, you would just press enter and that saved that heating there to 30 degrees. So it'll start to heat the vehicle at 30 degrees. Next one you've got your water level, so you've got off. So if you've got no water in the boiler, don't have the hot water on, as it's like boiling a kettle with no water in. You've got eco, which is heating the water at 40 degrees. You've got hot, which is heating the water at 60 degrees. And you've got boost, which will turn off the heating to prioritize the water first. So for this, we'll just say hot, which is heating the water at 60 degrees. 
Then moving on, you've got a picture of a gas bottle and some electricity signs. So this is what source you want to heat the water or the vehicle off or both. So you've got gas on its own, which you'd use if you were while camping as you wouldn't have any electric. You've got mix one, which is one kilowatt of electric and gas. You've got mix two, which is two kilowatts of electric and gas together. This is a great source if you're in the winter and you're really struggling to heat the vehicle or the water and you're in desperate need. Both sources together on mix two will re really reduce the time it takes to heat the vehicle or the water. Then you've got electric on one kilowatt, which you'd use on smaller CL sites or abroad, or if you're using a high drawn appliance just to stop the vehicle from tripping. And then you've got electric on two, which you can use in most sites throughout the UK. So for this, we'll just say electric on two. And then moving to the top right, you've got your fan, so you can have done eco or high. Eco will take a smaller feed of 12 volt, as it's a 12 volt assisted fan, and high will take a little bit more and you'll hear high a lot more to eco so if you wanted to sleep I'd rather put it on eco than high because it's not as loud. Coming down the bottom you've got a timer so you can time it to come on and off just the once though. You've got the time displayed on the main control panel and should you get a warning triangle in the middle you can go to the spanner, go to reset, click enter, click preset, click enter and then you'll have to go back in and reset all the heating, the hot water, the gas and the fan speed again. So in the kitchen area you have three gas rings which you can light like so. So you've got one, two, three gas and then this side is your electric hot plate on 240 only so make sure that you haven't knocked that when passing through and hook up on site because it will get warm and it could shatter the glass so like I say once you've had them on allow it to cool before you put the cooker hood down and then below that you have your grill and then underneath the grill you have your oven so you may want to remove your oven shelf and your grill pan when you travel I'll wrap them up as this can cause a bit of noise when on the road and then underneath in the right hand corner you've got all your grey taps which are your gas isolation taps any problems with gas turn the bottle off to be safe these are mainly for when the vehicle is serviced yearly and then you've got your two plugs, one's for your fridge and one's for your electric hot plate. So any problems with your electric hot plate, you can just unplug the plug from the socket. And then now on your fridge, this is an emetic fridge. So you've got three sources as you can see. You've got on off here, which you just press and hold. And it'll turn itself back on. <coughs> like so. And then you've got three sources, so you've got mains hookup, which will act like a, domex, a domestic fridge at home. So whether you're pre-chilling it and it's parked on the drive a couple of days before you're charging the motorhome batteries, you'll want to turn your fridge on to cool it down. Or you're on site, you would use this setting. And then you've got gas. So that's just, you need to press that a few times if you're lighting it on gas, if it's failing to light, as it just needs to bring the gas through the system and the gas hasn't been on with this being a new vehicle, and then that'll light, you'll hear it. And if you go outside and put your hand in the top right hand corner of the cover, of the fridge cover, you'll feel the heat when it's on gas. Or you can remove the cover and see the flame on the burner. And then you've got the battery setting on the end, which is when the engine is running, the alternator sends a feed to the fridge and it's just designed to keep the temperature of the fridge the same when departing. So if you've got shopping in, like I said about pre-chilling, what you'll probably want to do is pre-chill it a few days before at home when it's on hookup, put the shopping in the night before, allow it to cool. And then when you are ready to drive away the next day to go on your holidays, just put on the battery. As soon as the engine started, it, it will get a 12 volt feed and it will just turn it into a big cool box and it will keep 
the shopping at the same temperature it was at when departing. So that's great if you're moving from home to a site or you're moving from site to site when you're touring. It'll keep the shopping nice and fresh. But it's only off the leisure of the vehicle battery, not off the leisure battery. Then this side you do have your temperature. And then when you winterize the van, so we've talked about how to winterize the um water system and the boiler which is the main part what you, what you will also want to do is clean the fridge out and then not shut the door so if you slide these two lugs out which is by this little lever by the light it stops the door from shutting fully on itself and it allows you to get your hands in which allows air to circulate in and out of the fridge so it stops it from growing mold and bacteria in there so you don't get a surprise when you come back to use the vehicle. On the bench you've got your tower socket so you can turn it on and off from here. It'll only work when on 240. So turn it off and then you can press this red button at the bottom and slide it away. And you've got three sockets there for your kettle and other appliances. Your microwave is a mains 800 watt microwave on 240 so you've got to be hooked up for that to work. And the plug is in there should you ever need to remove it or unplug it, plate rack, bowl rack and cup rack there so you've got storage and then coming to the back so to open all your cupboards there's a little lever underneath and you can release the doors you've got two USBs here and a 240 socket, a 12 volt and a TV point if you wanted to stick a TV on here at any point. Boilers under there, obviously from outside you've got your storage and you've got your storage here. And then to make the beds, what you need to do is there's a little turnbuckle there. So if you unturn the turnbuckle, slide this out, you slide this all the way out. Be gentle with the lats. Don't go too fast as they can't get stuck. So you want to pull them out like so. You'll get to these two stoppers here, and then what you need to do is you need to lift it over, pulling it, and jam it in on the other side. And what that does is it stops it moving when you have the bed in place, and then you use the backrests. into the middle there and you've got a double bed but I would also turn these two the other way around as well to open your skylight so this type of skylight it shut when the bar is, a, is above the button press the button in pull the bar back you can then put into these two grooves should you want it to be open or you can have it all the way and then you do have a blackout blind and a fly screen but what you'll want to do is make sure this is shut when traveling you can't have these open as it's plastic and it will rip off and when it's windy i wouldn't advise having it open if it's over 50 miles an hour of wind so now in the washroom area so you've got your shower with real so if you've got wet towels wet coats it's a great place to hang them as it can drip dry in here shut the door put the heating on this will get lovely and warm as it's quite a small space for the heat so you can get that in there but this can also double up as a wardrobe if you're going on a bigger trip because some people don't use the shower so you can hang your coats and other clothing items in here make sure that your shower screen is turned back when traveling but then that'll come out and act as a shower screen and like I was saying when winterizing unscrew your shower head from your hose allow your hose to lie in the shower tray as you can see it's got quite a loop in there any water could potentially freeze in there so leave the mixer tap open with the hose lying in the tray hand basin this is obviously showing that your water pumps working and that is your hot water working there and it's very warm Your light's just underneath here for your washroom. So that's a light in the shower and a light underneath the cupboard. And then you've got storage. Complimentary bottle of blue. 
and the cap for your cassette. Top rated toilet, make sure the pump's on, press the blue button at the back, you've got your fresh water flush. So you just press and hold, flush the toilet. You always want to flush first, which lubricates the blade and the seal. And then open the blade to slide to the right. You always open the blade first, flush first, then open the blade. Use the toilet in the this position with the blade open. Then you'd flush after use and then slide this to the left to isolate and then that'll allow you to get the cassette out when you need to if you are you want if you do buy the blue liquid and you buy it in the pack with the pink there's nowhere really for the pink to go because this motorhome doesn't have a header tank it's from the main freshwater tank but what you can do is you can put the pink into a bottle and dilute it a spray bottle spray the bowl and then flush and it has the same effect it's just that the pink is designed as a bowl freshener and cleaner and then you do have this little diagram here so when you get a couple of lights underneath the cassette diagram it means that the cassette is full and you need to shut the blade and get it out empty it and replenish it with chemical in the wardrobe area you've got your infills for your front bed which I'll show you in a moment how that works Hanging reel, TV booster, so your booster is here so you can amplify the signal up or down should you require, should it be too strong or too weak, but there's no way you can move the aerial as it's a fixed aerial on the new Auto Trail motorhomes. And then next with this model is fitted with the 4G Wi-Fi system, so you've got Hawaii router there so you turn on from the front. But what you will need to do is you'll need to get a SIM card for it as it don't come with a SIM card so you can go to your phone provider who you pay your monthly contract with and say you need a data only SIM card and they can provide you one on a contract unlimited data for about £20 a month or you can go to Smarty which is a new um, SIM provider who do motor who do Wi-Fi only SIM cards so data only and then what you need to do is you need to take the back off, remove the battery and your sims go in here. But your passcode is also on the bottom there so you may want to write this down somewhere and this will be what you connect to your devices with. So you can connect your devices with that pin. But what you're looking for is you're looking for Hawaii on your devices to connect and then punch that pin in and you're good to go. And that would just go back up onto there and then there's an aerial on the roof that gets a better signal than your phones so there's a mass on the roof which will amplify the signal for this as well but, and then this is how the bed would go when it's down so you've got the thin infill cushion which goes in between these two so this is the base cushion and that's the backrest that would slide in the, the middle just to keep it nice and snug and then you've got your two bigger infill cushions so one goes the other way and one goes the other way as well so one goes landscape one goes horizontal in there on top of the table so the table just unclips you fold the leg and clip it down on the bar below which I'll show you how to do in a moment. So you put the table in this position now and then to bring it back to the normal position so you lift there's two clips on there you want to fold your leg down and you'll notice there's two clips on the other side of the table so that just rests up onto the bar so you want to get it higher to about 90 degrees clip the the clips onto the bar and there's the button to fold the leg and it would clip onto that one and then you do have the extension which will come out for the people sitting in this seat and these two will turn around and you can dine six people around the table jobs are good, jobs are good you've got storage under here and then underneath this one 
is where you will find your leisure battery. So you've got your main battery fuse, which is a 20 amp. And lift the cover and you've got a 100 amp hour a banger battery in there. So your leisure battery lives in this compartment here underneath the floor. In the cupboard above your double dinette is your power supply unit. So you've got your system shutdown button here. If you are leaving the vehicle in the winter, you can isolate it and this acts as a battery cutoff switch. And then you do have your RCD and MCBs. These two need to be on when our mains power, but just leave them as they are and everything will work. Should the heater or the charger not be working, you just check these are still lit up on mains electric. And then to this side, you've got all your 12 volt fuses, which are listed here, what does what. So it would be a good idea to carry some spare 12 volt blade fuses with you. And you've got your solar battery selector on the charger there. So you can have it up to the leisure battery, off or down to the leisure battery. So it's up to you. What I would do is I would leave it to the vehicle battery if I was you. And the sun will always be charging the vehicle battery. Build numbers here, so unique to every vehicle, is a build number authorised by Autotrail. Any problems with it, any parts that you need, give us that number and we'll be able to get the right parts for your vehicle. Above the front, you've got your double bed. So you've got a ladder there which clips onto here. This slides out and then the mattress turns over, but it's in the cover there for the new owners. It's a brand new vehicle. And you've got your light, which you can turn on from the top there. A net goes into here as well, which is underneath, just for children, so that they can't roll out during the night. To operate your Aftex drop-down TV, so you turn it on, so you release it here, should I say, and then should you be struggling to get it down, just make sure that you pull this from the back and it will fold down. There's a button here, turns it on and off, so puts it on the standby, and then you would use your remote control, point to the red light, wait for it to go blue, which indicates it's on. New build worker going on, so, um, there you can see that the telly's back, working. So you will have to retune the telly every time you move site, and to do so, big orange box, which, which has AQT in it, press and hold and it'll start to do a channel search and it'll find as many channels as it can in your area. Then if you are struggling you can use the booster in the wardrobe to amplify the signal up or down to get that static picture. So now in the cab to the right of the driver you do have your handbrake and then on the doors you have your electric window adjustment and electric mirror adjustment. So this joystick controls both top and bottom mirror. Top's your big mirror, bottom's your blind spot, so you do have two adjustments on both sides of the wing mirrors. On the doors to black them out on an evening, you have Remus car blinds fitted. So if you pinch and you slide along, you can black the passenger and driver's door out. And then to do the windscreen, you just pinch and slide along. And they will just meet on a magnetic strip there. You've got your headlight adjustment and your rear fog lights. You've got your wiper stalk, which has your trip computer on the end, so it'll tell you average and instant consumption, your miles per gallon, your range, your distance traveled, and your miles covered, all through the screen in the middle. Steering wheel controls, which will work when the engine's running. Headlights and indicators. And then you do have at the bottom, you have up for cruise control, push up to set, push up to accelerate, pull down to slow down. Cancel with a foot brake or cancel on the end of the stalk and then you can press resume to the last speed it was set at before the engine was turned off. At the bottom, you've got speed limiter, so push up slowly goes up in ones, push and hold it goes up in fives. This will limit the vehicle to the speed selected. But you do have the kick down function so you can floor the accelerator and it will override the cruise control as a, or should I say the speed limiter as a safety feature. 
Also, when you've got the cruise control on, you can still put your foot on the accelerator if you need that little bit of more power, and it will increase the speed for that time, but then it will slow back down to the cruise control speed set. You've got a... That's just a step coming in. Six-speed manual gearbox with up, lift into reverse, which brings on your reverse camera, which is just there. You can see the bike rack on the back of this model. ESR off is anti-slip relief off, so it's another word for turning your traction control off. You've got your hazards. This locks the door, including the habitation door, so the two cab doors and the hab door. You will have to manually lock the lockers with the little key for all the other lockers. Put your heated mirrors there. USB for charging purposes only, and a 12 volt for charging purposes only. Glove box here, and a heated and cooled glove box by the air conditioning at the top. Temperature on the outside ring. Fan speed on the in, must be on at least one or more for the air to work, which is this button here. And then you've got the distribution on the outside ring, so face, feet or screen, and whether you're recirculating air or you're bringing fresh air in. To work the accent unit, turn on by pressing and holding. You've got your volume. And then you have your radio, which is FM and AM. DAB is obviously your DAB radio, so you click on that. These words just run through its cycle, so you can press list and find all your stations. So you've got national stations, D1 national stations, BBC national stations, and then our local stations, which are Tiny Weir. And you can preset six of them to save your favorite DAB stations, and you can do the same on your FM should you be struggling to find DAB. Go back to home, you've got Bluetooth. So you can go to your Bluetooth. You want to find Bluetooth on your phone and start searching, and then it'll come up on here with Callum's iPhone or whoever's phone. Click pair. Pair on your device, allow your contacts to be saved so it will download your phone book into the head unit so you can scroll through your contacts on here and press whichever one you want. And then if you did want to use Bluetooth audio for your music, obviously you've got keypad, contacts, call log, music, you just click on music and then you can stream your music over Bluetooth instead of connecting via a USB. Scrolling along, you've got USB, iPod, and Android link, which will work through the USB, which is in the top glove box. Camera, so you can turn the camera on and have the camera on when going down the road, acting like a rear view camera. Going back to home, if you scroll this way, you've got navigation, so you've got your sat nav. So when that loads, I'll just talk about these buttons here. So you've got home, nav, cam, which is your reverse camera, DAB, ALT and Bluetooth which is your phone. So these are just shortcuts which you can use when driving just so you're not taking your eyes off the road for too long. You can just press it and it'll bring up this, the screen you want to select. So this is just loading your sat nav in there. So just setting it up with it being new. So your GPS chips in the top. And this is a XF270. So you can update these, so you can just go on the Accent website, updates, find the updates, plug the a USB into your laptop or computer, download it, put it into the USB here, and then go to the settings and load an update in, should it become glitchy. So that's just a map showing us we're on the A692 at Burnham Field and Biomoor. So that's just showing where we are now. If you click here, so the three dots in the right hand corner new route address you want to be putting your postcode of town in here which is the middle one pressing go to town set as destination and then it'll give you an ETA and a time and it'll start where you need to go so middle bar for your postcode or destination should you be going out of the country to France Spain you just change the country at the top 
and then obviously your save locations will save in there once you have started using the sat nav.